I don't know why, but for years I've wanted to visit Molesworth. Perhaps it's the name of the place that gives it a kind of mystique. Well, the air of mystery has always been heightened for me by the famous locked gate or chain across the bridge at the Clarence by the Acheron Accommodation House. It's about half an hour inside the station from the Hanmer side. Well, for two months now, this chain has been laid aside so that you and I can drive straight into the heart of the Molesworth itself. It's the first time we've been able to drive through the centre of the station. It's a trial to see if the road should be opened every year at this time. And judging by the quality of the special road signs, the decision's already been taken. Molesworth takes up an enormous hunk of the northern part of the South Island, 180,000 hectares, and that's around 450,000 acres. It could easily swallow up Banks Peninsula. The station's owned by the Crown and run by Landcorp. The western side of the property has been open to trampers and shooters and anglers for years. There's a reasonable road through to Lake Tennyson. But the road through the centre of the property up the Acheron River past the homestead has never been open to the public. We pay our $10 fee and we're away. Straight into history we pass the Acheron Accommodation House. It was built in the 1860s as one of a string of hotels on the original route from Nelson to Canterbury. Molesworth's history began at the same period, as a sheep station. But too many sheep were grazed here, and sometimes the land was burned off, and the rabbits came, millions of them. They wrecked the land. Winters were, and are, very tough. Sometimes half the flock died of cold. Erosion, rabbits and weeds finished off the owners. In 1938 they walked off. The government took over. Neighbouring St Helens was abandoned in the 40s. It too became part of Molesworth. The Crown brought in this man to kill the rabbits and restore the land. Bill Chisholm spent nearly 40 years on the biggest conservation project this country's ever seen. Today the station feeds 10,000 cattle. It makes a profit. The rabbits have been beaten. A new management plan seeks to increase public participation in the property. The opening of the road for two months is the first move in that direction. The road follows the Acheron River for 70 kilometres. It's been maintained by the Ministry of Energy to service the northbound power lines. But the new Electrocorp says it will be spending less money in future. About a thousand cars have been through here in the two open months. The Department of Conservation's Don Stevens drives through here every day to make sure all is well. How are you, Don? G'day, how are you? Yeah. The public have been extremely well behaved. Um, we've only had one accident uh, of any serious note. Um, the whole time the road's been open, involving the public. So. But close on a thousand vehicles that we've had through so far, I think that's particularly good. Well, all they say is in fact true. It's very, very big. We've been driving now for about an hour and a half and still we haven't come to the homestead. I gather that's another three quarters of an hour away along this road. Just over there behind me is Isolated Saddle and the homestead is somewhere over in that direction. Between Isolated Saddle and the Homestead is one of the biggest basins I've ever seen. 600 years ago, Isolated Flat was covered with mountain beech forest. Today, the cattle roam the top-dressed land. It's the size and the scale here that makes you feel very humble. It seems unlikely this wild area will ever be civilised. Certainly for now, it's not for softies. It was a good opportunity to come through this month to see, uh, see what Molesworth is like. We've, always, we've heard a lot about Molesworth and uh, it's, uh, it's been an interesting experience just to see this, this part of New Zealand again. Why did you want to come and well, do Well, I got offered the opportunity of going through and it was just something that I couldn't miss. I knew a lot of the boys that worked here when the uh, 
when it was privately owned, and I was at the, uh, the, the sale of the Moles Road sheep when they were sold in Culverton. Why have you always wanted to come through here? What? So, I'm not quite sure. We hear so much about it, and yet it was inaccessible to the general public. Over Ward's Pass, the homestead. At last, proof that someone does indeed live here. The homestead nestles with its outbuildings. The house was built a hundred years ago. Today, it's still home to the manager and his family. The house is on the northern boundary of Molesworth. Blenheim is a two and a half hour drive away. On the station's northern boundary is the original Molesworth homestead. It was built in 1865 of Cobb, and it must have been pretty primitive in the severe winters. The rescue of this huge property from dereliction and the successful introduction of cattle on what was once useless land is a remarkable story. In our second Molesworth report, we'll meet some of the people who carry on the work of Bill Chisholm today. How a handful of people keep the rabbits and the weeds at bay, and how they make a profit from the cattle and we'll see what life's like on one of the remotest farms in New Zealand. It's seven o'clock on a damp summer morning and Molesworth station's waking up. Hello EP, hello EP, this is EP1, Reed Ross, over. Every morning and evening at seven, Don Reed calls his stockman. Sometimes they're 60 kilometres away, on the far side of the biggest farm in New Zealand. Don Reed is Molesworth's manager. It's his kingdom. After 18 years here, he knows every metre of his 180,000 hectares. This month, the steers and heifers go to Christchurch for sale, and the bulls are with the cows. The stockmen have to head out the back to look after them. But for Don and Anne Reed's seven-year-old daughter, Jill, mornings mean other duties. Susie Sow needs breakfast. Hello, Jill's the only child on Molesworth these days with her brother Hamish away in Nelson at boarding school. Her nearest child playmate is 14 kilometers away. For a station running 10,000 cattle, Molesworth's cow shed is a surprise. They milk only two cows. Vicky McIntosh looks after them, as well as the calves that get mismothered. Every morning at nine, Anne Reed and Vicky record the temperature, the rainfall and the frost reading. Frosts in midsummer are common here. Each year there are 220. They watch the weather carefully. Winter means snow over half the property. Molesworth spreads into Nelson, Marlborough and Canterbury. For 50 years since the Crown took over, cattle have roamed the valleys and hills. The early days when sheep and rabbits competed for ever-decreasing feed are just a memory. They destroyed this land. Careful management has brought it back. The land is fragile. The cattle must be grazed carefully in a precise rotation for farming to work. The property can't be overstocked. The land couldn't take it. A new management plan says rabbit and weed control and farming will continue to be the aim of Landcorp and their manager. The trial opening of the road through the station for the past two months heralds the other aim of the management plan, more public involvement. It's likely the road will be open every January and February. Um, we can accommodate uh, a lot of um, public use, recreation, tramping, fishing, shooting, pretty well most things that people want to do. But there are times of the year and so on where, uh, you know, because of the farm operations, we uh, feel that we have to, uh, you know, just restrict uh, operation or restrict access at those times and uh, have some control of, uh, of what's happening. Don Reed says he's so involved with the station, he often feels more like an owner than a manager. He has full control over all aspects of Molesworth, from rabbit control to public access. What needs to be remembered, I think, is that it's the revenue that the farming operation is producing that uh, is paying for the uh, 
rehabilitation exercise uh, for the weed control, for the rabbit control, and so on. So it's really the farming operation that is, is keeping the place right, even keeping the place uh, the way that um, I'm sure, you know, all New Zealand Zealanders would like it to stay. But such matters don't worry seven-year-old Jill Reed. For five hours each day, she's at school. We go from nine o'clock to lunchtime, have a bit of play then, and then have lunch. And then go to one o'clock and go to three in school. Jill's mother, as teacher, has had to relearn educational ideas since she too did schooling by correspondence right here at Molesworth as the daughter of the station's original manager, Bill Chisholm. Perhaps it proves nothing really changes on the country's biggest farm. Even though more people are likely to see it in future, it is and will remain a farm. It's farming that pays for weed and rabbit control, for land improvement. New management plan or not, this country will always be a place of few people and some cattle, one of the last great wild places.